bribery, backsheesh, begging and bartering. Those are the four Bs that we never knew existed until we started cruising. And in this extra, we're going to try and explain what they are and how we've dealt with them over the years. In Thursday's episode, you saw Liz explaining about this compromising situation that she was put in when we checked into a new country. And Liz gave away two of our bottles of wine. Why? Well, at least it wasn't a crate of your beer. There would have been two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, well, OK, there are three things to think about here. Firstly, I had to think on the hoof on my own pretty quickly and I was worried that if I didn't do something to appease this guy, he could have made life difficult for us. I just didn't know. So that was the first thing, it was all flashing through my head. Secondly, it was only two old crap bottles of wine that we were never going to drink, so I didn't really care that they went. And thirdly, as I say, I was on my own. I think if you've been there with me. You, you were upstairs in the cockpit, I was down below. If you'd been there as well, I think it would have been a very difficult, different situation. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, he got what he deserved yeah. because they were two rank bottles of wine that we would never have drunk. So, uh, yeah, it's his own fault. Yes. Now, we should add that in this particular situation, this is a known problem. The authorities were aware of this. And in fact, our agent pressed us and did ask us if we ended up in this situation, which we did. But we should add that what we've noticed generally in South, Southeast Asia is a concerted effort by the authorities to clamp down on this kind of corruption. And they want to try and do everything by the book. Yeah, we saw it when we visited the Anambas a couple of years ago on the wall uh, in the immigration office. There were big signs saying, if you see corruption, let us know. Corruption bribery not allowed. So they're really making an effort to do it. Now, this isn't the first time that we have come across corruption and we know of many yachties who have recounted similar stories, in fact. Take the Suez Canal, for example, when we transited in 2009, 2010. You have to have a pilot on board, an official person who stays on board throughout the duration of the day. You get uh, Ishmaelia halfway down and then you change over and you get a second pilot. Mm. Now, we were already forewarned these pi pilots, I was about to call them pirates, yes, and they, they right. bloody are pirates, yeah, they are. because they expect backsheesh. Yeah. But it's a bit more complicated than that, because when we gave them the payment mm. in the little brown envelope, and we were told to wait until they're off the boat before giving it to them, he proceeded to open it up, looked at us forlornly and said, this isn't enough, and started walking back on the boat. He was virtually crying. Now, I guess most of these pilots are used to working on commercial vessels, much bigger ships, so perhaps they get bigger tips. Uh, but we gave him pretty much what everyone else gave him, but it was just surprising to see that what we had given him in that brown envelope clearly was not enough. To be honest, I think we could have given him any amount and he would have come back and asked for more. And that, of course, is on top of the normal fee, the correct fee mm. you pay anyway. This is just extra. Yeah, and there were a couple of other places down in Amman. We had an agent who really mm. put the screws on us. You have to have an agent. They appoint the agent for you. You pay your normal fees and then you pay a whole load of extra fees on top. Yes, and I think a lot of people, because like, there were 12 boats at that time, all felt the same way yeah. and unfortunately in this particular area there is only one agent mm. so you don't have a choice mm. you kind of have to go with this person and you like it or lump it yeah you can argue until you're blue in the face but you have no, you've got no leg to stand on mm. and then the last one that we want to talk about is arriving in india india mm. oh yes that was memorable <laughs> we decided to check in at mumbai and as a word word to the wise if you're going to check into india don't do it in mumbai <laughs> there's nowhere to put the boat you have to put it uh, you have to anchor out there's no dock nothing you can't get you can't get to shore you have to go on an agent's boat and if you're really lucky you'll weigh anchor and there'll be a shopping trolley or a bicycle yep. or something else attached to it it's not pleasant mumbai is lovely <laughs> yeah. but the experience of being on a boat not so good and then we had an agent there who they were bending over backwards for us and we know that they were uh, and they were negotiating <laughs> with immigration. We couldn't even raise anybody on the, uh, radio, on the radio, no one was listening. Anyway, we ended up paying 
Hundreds. Several hundred dollars. Hundreds of dollars oh, yes, for the pleasure of checking in. Yeah. That sheesh, it's probably a word that you've heard and you probably think it means bribery, but it can mean different things to different people in different countries. It can also mean just straightforward tipping and it can also mean giving alms, giving alms to the poor and the needy. So it's definitely worth doing a little homework before you get to the country on what's normal, what's normal there, what we might consider as a bribe is actually a normal way to oil business over there and in some cases bakshish just helps just to oil the wheels and it's all part of the way it works in that country. Mm. Now you're talking about getting, uh, trying to get an idea of what a country is like before you go there, do your research. Yeah. Before we left Turkey, we'd heard Egypt being the first stop was uh, backsheesh, backhanders here, there and everywhere. Uh, just a positive story, because this isn't all negative stories, a little positive story. I was in a shop asking the shopkeeper if there was an internet cafe in Port Suez. And a local lad my age overheard the conversation, said, I know where there's an internet cafe, and spent 10 minutes walking me through the back streets of Port Suez and took me to an internet cafe. Now, because I'd heard it was all about backhanders, back sheesh, I immediately got my wallet out to give him some money. And he was so offended. He said, what are you doing? I don't want to get paid for that. So, you know, just a little positive spin there. It's not all bad news. And while we're on the subject of being fleeced um, when you're a foreigner abroad, it is worth remembering that in some countries there really is a tourist price and a foreigner's price. In India, if you go to the ancient monuments, if you go to any, any of the really top ones, UNESCO, they have on the ticket office, local foreigner. That's the way it is. And generally, we don't have a problem with that because we feel that with a lot of these countries, they are a lot poorer on the whole than we are, the local population are, and they make it plain that these are two different prices. So as long as it's fair, we'll pay it. And the thing is just to get used to it and not grumble about it. Yeah, I think some people would argue it's not fair. Yeah, Why should do. you pay? You know, I think it was 10 times the amount in some yeah. places in India. Yeah. I think a lot of people will have a problem with that. But as Liz says, we have to look at this fairly and, you know, really, we can afford it. That's one thing we have to remember. Yes. You know, we might not think that we are well off, but of course, compared to a lot of these countries that you go to, you pretty much we, we are. are. Yeah. So I think it's a case of like it or, or lump it. If you don't like it, then don't go. Yeah, I mean, 10 times the price when the fifth five quid to us isn't that much. Five quid to a poor Indian is a lot of money. So there you go. Begging really depends on the situation and I suppose how you feel about it. Now, take India again as another example. Uh, begging is quite widespread, certainly in the north and in the centre of India, mm. uh, especially the tourist hotspots. Mm. So in those situations, we tend not to engage at all. But in Kerala, which is uh, quite a well-to-do state and much yep. better off than a lot of states in yep. India, uh, there isn't any sense of begging there. You, you very rarely see people begging Kerala. Um, but there was one old lady we used to see outside the church, uh, clearly poor and destitute. And, uh, you know, in that, in that situation, we would give her some money. Yeah, so we, 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 took the, we took the view it was genuine. And then there was another one I remember very clearly in Sudan. We were walking through um, some shops and a tall man, old, dishevelled, looking ahead, very dignified, walked into the shop very gently. And the man behind the counter, obviously the owner of the shop, gave him some money. He just, just passed him a little bit of money. There was no actual obvious begging, but it was clear that the man was coming in for alms so and the locals were helping Part of their him. culture. Yeah, because there's no welfare state. Mm. You know, it's all about the family looking after you. And this man obviously had no family, so the locals were looking after him. And I think it behoves us, if they're doing it, to also do it. So there have been occasions when we have given money to people who clearly have nothing and need mm. something from us. Now, uh, there's a different kind of begging, of course, and that's from persistent, almost aggressive like young children. Money, sir, money, money, mister. Money, 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 money. money. give money, give money. Uh, what? Money? No, oh, you give me one dollar. We saw this quite a few times. You get the young lads would come out on their kayaks and they'd come and say hello. And we like to give them, say, fishing hooks. That's one yeah. very good example. Seven boys came alongside and we had seven fishing hooks, little fishing kits. Mm. 
which we gave to them because we knew that they all love fishing. This was all fine, 10 minutes of banter, and then suddenly one of them just started going, Mr. Money, 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 Mr. Money. Next thing you know, all seven of them are doing it. And I have to say, I get a bit vociferous about this. Uh, you know, my reaction is no. No, you're not getting any money from me. Scares them. Because it sets a precedent. And as soon as us visitors, us yachties, start handing out cash when young boys and girls ask for it, that's going to set the expectation. Mm -hmm. And so the next visiting yachty is going to be hassled even more. Yeah. So I think there is a point at which we say absolutely not for any kind of financial handout, but, you know, little presents here and there. We carry pencils, don't we? Things and, good for their things education. Like I mean, that was something in yeah. Africa we were told about yeah. was pens, pencils, even footballs, tennis balls, little balls to, yeah. to play football with, those kind of things. Um, but when it comes to cash, no. Cold hard cash? No. 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 And then the other one that happens quite a lot, certainly has in Southeast Asia, is people asking for alcohol. Mm. In last week's episode, in Thursday's episode, you saw some boys that came alongside, young men came alongside, and they wanted a drink, and it clearly wasn't a drink of water. They wanted a beer. How did you feel about that? <laughs> no one touches my beer unless I invite them to. <laughs> yeah, so definitely do not give, well, we do not give away uh, beers. It's too precious. Yeah, unless they're absolutely gasping then. Of course, we give them soft drinks. Yeah, we do. We yeah, give and that's them water. Not, not a problem, but uh, yeah. especially in these dry uh, states, these dry areas in certain countries. Yeah, I mean, Aceh and Maldives, they are both dry, and when you check in, you are requested not to give, you're specifically told not to give alcohol to these people, so it's just as well not to do it, really. Bartering is better. Yes, it is, if you can. That's something that we always try and do. Now, fishermen and fisherwomen around the world are quite often more than happy to exchange goods for fish um, or seafood that they may have caught. Mm. And we've done that on a number of occasions. I think it's quite important to think about what they want in return. We find the most popular things are things like cigarettes, bags of sugar, sweets, cookies, biscuits, that kind of thing. Yeah. Especially if you imagine these guys, uh, you know, they're, they're away from home for days on Usually, end. Yeah. So, uh, you know, things like bags of sugar, they really appreciate. And if they don't ask for anything in particular, then we tend to give them Esper t-shirts. And here you can see us <laughs> modelling our Esper hot and sweaty <laughs> <laughs> so we give uh, you know clothing away as well yeah we do and there was one notable occasion in the very south of the Red Sea in Eritrea uh, we were in a completely remote area nothing nobody around a couple of raggedy fishermen but fishing boats with a family of fishermen boys on it and they came up to Esper and they produced two beautiful lobsters mm. I mean just out of nowhere these lobsters just freshly caught mm. So we, we rushed around the boat trying to find something. They weren't really interested in sugar or anything like that. And I think we did give them sugar, they didn't want cigarettes. But we gave them all the old clothes that we'd had hanging around that we didn't use anymore. And they loved it, they were, they were really happy. Mm -hmm. We had the lobster, enjoyed the lobster, and the next morning they went past the boat on purpose, <laughs> all waving and smiling, all complete wearing all of our old clothes. <laughs> they were so happy. Yeah, we were too. Yeah, we were. So really, there are no hard and fast rules about any of this. You know, you kind of have to judge it as you go. Uh, prepare as much as you can beforehand. Talk to people who've been there. Talk on forums, on Facebook. There are lots of groups, lots of advice out there. Take some of it with a pinch of salt. Just gather as much information as you can beforehand so you are prepared. And watch videos like this one. So what do you do if someone asks for a bribe? Well different ways of looking at it really. I guess it depends if you don't really know the situation then just do what's comfortable for you. Sometimes there are situations where it's probably just best to swallow your pride and to give whatever it is they ask for. But I would say on the whole if you can put your foot down, say no. And remember that in some cultures, they are very different to us. They don't have welfare states, they don't have a safety net for people who fall through that net, and they need some kind of assistance. If the locals can do it, so can we, but you need to judge it for yourself for each, for each occasion. Yeah, and I think, you know, as yacht is, we're, we're putting money into the community anyway, mm. and if you don't do it, then maybe consider 
shopping in local mm -hmm. shops mm -hmm. rather than the, perhaps the big international supermarkets. Yeah. Clearly we spend a lot of time in, in marinas and boatyards, we employ local people, so in that sense you are already contributing to the local economy which is, which is great. Yeah and I remember recycling as well, really once we left the Med or even when we were in Turkey we hardly ever threw anything away, that's anything on the boat, anything boat related, I mean, literally anything, somebody has a use for it. Mm. Recycling is not a new concept over here certainly from India onwards, nothing gets thrown away. Mm. You can always do something with it. Okay, so hope you enjoyed today's little extra on the four Bs. <laughs> Might have given you a bit of food for thought. Obviously, as you know, we love hearing from you. So pop your comments, observations and stories in the comments below. And just a reminder that this is an FTB Extra. These are outside of our Thursday weekly vlog in which we take a subject from one of those episodes and discuss it in a little bit more detail. So we're gonna put these in our Q&A playlist. So if you wanna catch up on any you may have missed in the past, go to our playlist and you'll find all of our Q&A Extras in there. So like, subscribe, share, all the usual things. And for the moment, peace and fair winds. Ready to go? Yeah. I don't know if I can do this. Okay. Stop. Don't you agree though? There's wind I coming. know, I did say to you, what about the breeze? Just going straight into my mic. Yep. You're, you're not as exposed as I am. Can you just walk until you can't feel the breeze anymore? No, no, no. Only if you're happy about Go it. On. There's wind all around here. It's not, you can't do it in here. Yep, yeah, well. Oh. You say that. This is terrible. It's not working. It's just not working, is it? Stop recording.